everyone and welcome back to the breakdown today I'm going to be teaching you how to run Minecraft 1.18 faster without any lag this is going to be a significant FPS boost for you in Minecraft 1.18 pretty much no matter what kind of computer you have even if you have a lower end computer this video should help you play Minecraft 1.18 better than you're currently playing it now that doesn't mean it's going to be completely lag free or completely perfect but it should get you a lot closer to a lag free experience for me personally on a really really good system I can a lot of times go from 100 FPS to well over 1000 we'll see if we can do that in this video here today first of all though I do have my smart sponsor which is Apex Minecraft hosting and just because you may not have the best computer doesn't mean you can't host a Minecraft server for you and your friends and that's where Apex Minecraft hosting comes in go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own Minecraft server ran on Apex Minecraft hosting's hardware so that means you can host your own Minecraft server that you have full control over and as long as you can play on other servers like our server playoutbreakdowncraft.com, which is hosted on Apex Minecraft hosting, then you can play on an Apex Minecraft hosting server. So whether it's Hypixel or Breakdowncraft, if you can play on a server like that, you can play on a server hosted at Apex. The only difference is at Apex, you have full control. So again, that's the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your server up and running. Nevertheless, we are assuming in this video that you do have Optifine. Optifine is the best way to make Minecraft lag free. And while this tutorial says 117, it is out for Minecraft 1.8. 18, but at the time I'm recording this, the video hasn't released just yet. It's about to, but it's not out just yet, and because of that, the content's not updated on our website, but as soon as it comes out, it will be updated here, and by the time you make it to our website, this will say Minecraft 1.18. So you do need Optifine. You can either go through the video tutorial here, linked in the description down below. It's the second link down below. Or you can go through the text tutorial. Either way, they're both up to date and both work perfectly fine with Optifine. Nevertheless, once you've got Optifine, we can move on with this tutorial. Starting off here in the Minecraft launcher. Now, we do have a dedicated tutorial in the description down below on adding more RAM to Minecraft. But I'm going to give you the basics in this video because we want to just kind of go ahead and go over the simplicity of, of how you can add more RAM but we're not going to show you how to see how much RAM you have and things like that. So if we click here on installations, you'll have this Optifine installation. If you don't, you don't have Optifine installed and you need to go do that before this video is going to work at all. Nevertheless, go ahead and hover over it and click on the three dots on the right hand side, then click on edit. It's going to open up Optifine right like this, where we can then click on more options. And here at the beginning, we have XMX 2G. That means two gigabytes of RAM is currently dedicated to Minecraft. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM on my computer, so I can definitely up that to four gigabytes without any problem. Most of the time, 4 gigabytes is plenty for Minecraft. However, 1.18 has been more RAM intensive than other versions in the past, but 4 gigs is plenty. Modded Minecraft will need more like 6 or 8 a lot of times, but again, 4 gigabytes is going to be plenty, and that's what that 4G signifies. If you want more in-depth RAM coverage and how to see how much RAM you have and how much RAM you should dedicate for how much RAM you have and how to figure all that out, there is a dedicated video in the description down below on how to do that. By the way, that'll be the last video we link out to. I know some people are like, you link out to so many videos. It's just so much content. I mean, we've been doing this for like 10 years, so we have so much content built up at this point. But anyway, let's go ahead and click on the green save button there. And now we can go ahead and play Minecraft. Again, making sure we have that Optifine profile selected. Now, when we click on play, for me, it's going to open up right away. You may have to confirm you want to play, you know, modded Minecraft by clicking the play button again on like a little pop-up window. That's completely normal. Don't freak out about that. Nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick jump cut. I will meet you on the Minecraft main menu where we can zoom in and continue this tutorial. All right, so here we are on the Minecraft main menu. First things first, we need a baseline, and that's gonna be what your current FPS is in Minecraft. Go ahead, jump in the game. I'm gonna do this in play.breakdowncraft.com, which is our Minecraft server. The reason I'm doing that is because we wanna make sure that this is you know, the same across everything, and if I do it on Breakdowncraft, I can test it again later on and see what my FPS is. Now, if we go ahead and we hit F3, up here in the top left, we'll be able to see a high number and a low number of our FPS. I believe one is like current FPS, and one's the average, but overall, just kind of sit where you are and move around. Whatever you want to do, come up with a number, though, as to what this is going to be. I'm going to move around a little bit, and it looks like we are hovering about 60 on the top end and 50 on the low number. So I'm going to do, as I said, write this down, 50 on the high, or sorry, 60 on the high end and 50 on on the low end there and that's where we're going to sit right write this down because i want to see in the description or in the comments down below i want you to go comment what your fps was before and what your fps is after because uh it's gonna be crazy nevertheless though we can now go ahead and disconnect from breakdown craft and we want to go ahead and from the minecraft main menu click on options then we want to go ahead and click on video settings now first things first I had shaders on. You want to turn shaders off. 
Shaders are a huge lag thing. So first things first, I want to get that out of the way. Make sure that you click on shaders and then turn that off. Now, if you can't click on shaders, that's okay. That means they're not on, right? So if you can't click on shaders, shaders are off or make sure you do click on shaders and turn them off if they are on. I'm going to be assuming that my Minecraft, by the way, when we're done is going to look horrible. I'm going to assume you can't play Minecraft at all before. And then afterwards, we're going to have basically the lowest settings possible. And then you can come up and turn things up. Like for example, if you wanted to turn on shaders, you could, if you wanted to turn on graphics, you know, higher, you could, you could try all this different stuff, but by default, I'm going to assume that you can't play at all. And you just want to be able to get in game at a decent FPS. And we're going to be able to accomplish that. And then you can come up and up these settings until you can get a better FPS. Nonetheless though, let's go ahead and go into graphics here where we want to change that to fast render distance, turn that all the way down to two chunks in order to get the best FPS. This is where most people are going to want to, you know, change. You might want to go up to eight or 10 to be able to, you know, see a bit more, but two chunks is going to be the best performing. Smooth lighting needs to be turned off. Simulation distance need to be turned down to five chunks. Smooth lighting level needs to be turned off. Frame rate needs to be set to unlimited. That's going to give you the highest frame rate possible. If you do notice a lot of like stuttering in game, you could limit your frame rate to 60 or 30. That may help that. But if you do that, that means you're not going to be able to get that huge FPS performance that we kind of like promise at the front end because your FPS is only going to ever be what you set your limiter to. Now for your GUI scale, technically GUI scale one is going to be, uh, well, the best but we're doing a video here and you can't see that. So we need to make that a bit bigger so we can see it. Entity shadows need to be turned off. Brightness doesn't affect performance. Attack crosshair doesn't affect performance. Dynamic lights need to be turned off. Dynamic FOV doesn't really affect performance. I personally prefer it off, but that's up to you. Shaders, as I said, need to be turned off. And then we also need to move on to quality where you want to turn mitmap levels all the way down to off. And some of these will now start reloading. So just get ready for that. Mitmap type needs to be nearest. Androscopic filtering needs to be turned off. Like I said, some of these will be reloading. Anti-aliasing needs to be turned off. Immersive textures need to be turned off. Random entities need to be turned off. Better grass needs to be turned to off. Better snow needs to be turned to off. Custom colors need to be turned off. Custom fonts off. Connected textures need to be turned off as well. As you can see, it's kind of recurring here. Natural textures, turn those off. Custom sky, turn that off. Custom items, turn that off. Custom GUIs, you guessed it, turn that off. Custom mo entity models, turn that off as well. And then last but not least, distortion effects need to be turned off. And I don't believe FOV effects change anything, but again, I don't like FOV, so I'm turning that off. Go ahead and click done there, and we can go ahead and move on to our details. Details, as you guessed, either need to be turned off like clouds or fast like trees. So if there's an off option, they need to be turned off. If there is a fast option, they need to be turned fast. Rain and snow, by the way, that won't affect servers. That'll just be in single player. Sky needs to be turned off. Stars off. Show capes. You can leave that on if you want. It doesn't really affect performance. Sun and moon, turn that off. Fog it needs to be turned off. Fog start doesn't matter because uh, it needs to be turned off. And then view bobbing. Personal preference doesn't really affect performance, but I personally like it off. Held item tooltips doesn't affect performance either. You can leave that on or off. Auto save indicator doesn't affect performance. Swamp colors though do, and those need to be turned off. Vignette needs to be turned to fast, and alternative blocks need to be turned off. Entity distance need to be turned all the way down to 50%, and bio blend needs to be turned off. Whew, that was a lot. Now we can go ahead, click done there, and move on to the performance tab. And this is where Optifine adds in some really, really cool custom features that can really make things a lot better when it comes to being in game. Render regions needs to be turned on, and what's cool is you can hover over these and kind of see what they do. But as you can see, allows terrain rendering got optimized by the GPU for more effective at higher render distance, not recommended for integrated graphics. Now, what that does mean is that if you have a dedicated GPU, like an NVIDIA or an AMD GPU, you can turn this on. However, if you don't have one of those GPUs, you're using Intel integrated graphics, you actually want to leave render regions off. Fast render need to be turned on. Smart animations need to be turned on. Fast math needs to be turned on. Smooth FPS, I'm going to leave that off because I want to see that huge FPS number. But again, if you're getting choppy lag, even after doing this, you can turn smooth FPS on and it's going to smooth it out while lowering your overall FPS. It's going to make gameplay a lot smoother. I want that crazy FPS though. So because of that, we're leaving that turned off. Smooth world, turn that off. And again, that's because of that FPS stabilization. I want more FPS stabilization because I want to see how crazy it can get. Turn it on to smooth that FPS. Most of you should probably turn it on. Chunk updates. This one's going to be set to one to get the fastest, highest FPS. Dynamic updates needs to be turned on. Basically, when you're standing still, more things are going to load around the player than when you're moving. That's such smart, you know, loading of chunks. And that's what we need to be done. Lazy chunk loading is kind of similar. Go ahead and turn that on for, you know, smoother chunk loading on servers. 
numbers. And then Chunk Builder is actually a brand new setting. And I've just left that threaded for now. I did some testing and I couldn't really see any huge FPS fluctuation. But again, threaded's what I left it on. But be feel, feel free to play with that. For animations, moving on from performance, we want to simply click all off and you're done. It's that simple. Then moving on to other, in here there's not much to change. One thing I would recommend is turning on show FPS. This is going to put a little FPS meter in the top left of your screen so you can see it easier. Time is something else that can have a little bit effect on lag but only affects single player. You can set it to day only for example for the least amount of lag because it's going to make entities not spawn thus reducing lag from them. Weather is another thing. You can turn that off if you want but it will only affect single player and I personally like weather so unless you're getting rain lag or something like that you can leave that on. Now auto save this is where if you're getting lag like choppiness you might be getting auto save lag and that's where you can come in here and up this. By default 45 seconds is how often Minecraft saves. You have to ask yourself though how much time and work in Minecraft are you willing to lose? For me six minutes is about the sweet spot however you may be more open to three or maybe you're okay with losing almost half an hour of, my, of Minecraft work. Whatever it is go ahead and set it in game and if you're having choppy lag that's going to be why probably is autosave or could be autosave I should say. Nevertheless that's now all the Optifine settings we have went through everything. Resource packs is something I do want to mention here. A lot of people say can I get a lag reduction resource pack? Nope. <laughs> Minecraft by default it, the texture loading isn't making Minecraft lag. A lot of people I think assume it is, but the default texture pack is going to be perfectly fine. It's not going to cause any more lag. The entities, the things around the texture pack are what's causing the lag. You know, the, the chunks loading. It's not the texture pack. The texture packs that were claimed to fix lag, 99% of the time really don't. So default is going to be great. Don't install any additional ones because those can cause lag because they can increase the resolution. But you're not going to see much of a difference with the default resource pack versus a lag reduction resource pack. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump back into Breakdown Craft here. And as we can see in the top left, we will have FPS increasing. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to get the 1,000 FPS that I've gotten in the past. And that's due to Minecraft 1.18 being much laggier than older versions of Minecraft. This is the laggiest version of Minecraft that we have seen in a very, very long time. But as I said, when you stand still, more chunks load around you. So you'll notice when I stand still, the FPS will typically drop. It's not doing it in this case, of course, because I'm talking about it. But typically, the FPS will drop and when you're moving around, it will increase. But as you can see, sitting still, we were hitting 600 there. It's now probably loading a few chunks around us, so it's going back down. But you get the idea. I saw a peak of, well throw it down a little bit. We'll say 575 on the top end. And then on the low end, we can go ahead and say it's about 275. And that is an increase from 60 to and 50 to two, 575 and 275. So hundreds of FPS gotten over 400 FPS and 200 FPS, depending if you're looking at the high number or the low number. But nevertheless, thank you so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more incredible Minecraft content every single day of the week. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Enjoy your hopefully lag-free Minecraft, and don't forget to post in the comments down below what your new and old FPS numbers are. Anyway, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I am out. Peace.